Good afternoon and welcome back everyone. I kindly call upon Professor Dr. R. Satya to welcome our guest of honor. So good afternoon all. So I am here to introduce uh, Dr. Praveen Kumar, Assistant Professor, Senior Grade, uh, Department of Civil Engineering, uh, PhD College of Technology. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Praveen Kumar. Dr. Praveen Kumar obtained his PhD degree from Anna University and Masters in Computer Methods and Application in Structural Engineering from Quantor Institute of Technology. His current research focuses on engineered cement composites, nanosilica based materials and concrete, graphene based mortar and concrete, various optimization techniques, microstructures of construction materials, fiber reinforced hollow concrete blocks. So he has published more than uh, 24 papers in reputed journals and also have received grants from various uh, government agencies such as CSIR and UGC for organizing workshops, seminars, FTPs and training programs. And he has also delivered more than uh, 20 keynote address in various FTP training programs and conferences. And he is an institution in setting up uh, the laboratory named Advanced Concrete Research Laboratory in PhD College of uh, Technology. Uh, he holds a lifetime membership in various professional bodies such as Indian Society for Technical Education, Institute for Engineers, Institution of Engineers, Indian Society for Construction Materials and Structures, Indian Association for uh, Structural Engineering. So these are the uh, few mem membership bodies I have listed out. So we are very happy to have you here, sir. call upon Professor G. Arun to present a memento to our guest of honor. I kindly request our guest of honor, Dr. S. Praveen Kumar, to take over the session. of concrete. So we have a types of binders. 
So, uh, in previous days, before we get a terminology called cementitious material or mineral material, uh, whatever it is, we use this as a binder and in many places we call this as a glue. So, the concrete can be produced on the basis of all these types of glues which have a nature of additions to the aggregates and the ability for hardening and strength development. So, we have a organic glues, organic mineral and inorganic glues. So, finally, it can be in the form of a solutions based, solution bond based or it can be in the form of a, uh, some mold. So, finally, we will get a composite material. So, apart from cement, we have uh, other types of cementitious material just for better understanding, I have shown only three types. There are a lot of things available, maybe morning uh, uh, scientists from SCS who have given you a list how the uh, how many materials are available in the other than Portland cement. So this is a production place where you have a blast furnace slab. So from the iron ore and the impurities, then it will be in the shifted to the high uh, temperature and finally you will get a slag here. So this slag can also be used for your uh, replacement which will be in the form of a binder. So then fly ashes, so uh, normally we used to get uh, uh, two types of fly ash, one is dry fly ash and another one is the wet fly ash. In the cooling tower, whatever the material that comes down in the form of a dry form, so that fly, fly ash will be used in the place of the cement. And similarly, the wet fly ash also currently we are using in the form of a liquid which will be used for the place of uh, hollow blocks and the paver blocks, other things. And this is a uh, form of a silky of fume, so that there is a possibility of having a condensed silky of fume in the market. So the basic ingredients of the concrete, so in the form cement, water, coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. So these are the percentage in conventionally we have with the cement um, uh, concrete, that is 43 percentage of coarse aggregate, 34 percentage of sand and 15 percentage of cement and 8 percentage of uh, water. So, uh, since uh, we talk about binders, so it is very important to understand about the gypsum and the lime. So previously, before we get a material called cement, it was uh, proposed with the cement and the gypsum, which have an idea about the cycle of gypsum and the calcium carbonate. Later, I will uh, talk detailly about this in the uh, concrete performance. So this is a history, just for better you know, understanding how the uh, Portland cement arrived in the market and then this is the principle of Portland cement that it bringing with the high temperature, then grinding and pulverizing. Then finally, what is the need for having these kind of Portland cement in the concrete? It is supposed to have a strength to the masonry, stiffness or hard, hardness, then good plasticity and excellent binding material, easily workable and moisture resistant. So, uh, the very important thing is of uh, cement chemistry. So which deals with the two things, only is oxides that present in the uh, cement and as well as the compositions. So for example, if you have a raw material, you will uh, able to get a component elements in the raw material that is O2, SiCa, Al and Ft and the oxide things are CaO, SiO2, Al2O3, so all these things. So in general, when we start doing all the research activities in the market, so we used to have uh, the definitions for an alternative for the material which defines from XRF. So the data of oxides will be taken into account and from that we will be able to go for the compound uh, analysis that is uh, these are the three components that is four components that are very essential to have a strength, to have a durability or any kind of property that has to be enhanced in the uh, alternative material which we use conventionally in the place of a Portland cement. So these three or four are very important. So that is what I have listed here. That is C3A, C3A, then C4AF and C, uh, C2AF. So all this uh, hydration process that takes place when the cement is mixed with the water. So what is the main uh, composition that takes place is CaO or it is a proportion of uh, 60 to 65, SiO2 is the proportion of 70 to 70 to 25 and Al2. So the main major thing that plays a vital role in the alternation for the cement is SiO2. So whenever we select any material to be used as an alternative for the cement, those materials are supposed to have a higher percentage of silicon dioxide as well as there should be some possibility of having a minimum percentage of calcium oxide also. 
So this is a box component. I uh, hope uh, in your uh, concrete technology, these are the basic things. Why I am highlighting these basic things is when we start doing uh, the activities at the level of higher level of research, the basic things are very essential to interpret certain data that we array from the experimental part or the analysis which we carried out with the sophisticated equipments like XRD or TEM or SEM, all those things. So, after understanding the basics that how this com composites are the component that takes place during when you mix uh, cement with the water, then you have a very clear cut picture that how there are possibility of having enhancement in the ettringent formation, monosilicate. So, all these things contributes towards something I will show you. So, what happened with uh, your mineral components when you take a tricalcium silicate, it generates the heat rapidly and more and uh, uh, hydration process also it gets more rapid uh, process then the less resistance to the sulphate attack. Similarly for the tricalcium aluminate, so it is weak against the sulphate attack and it reacts fast. So I uh, hope you understand uh, when we start working with any material, if we understand the oxide compositions, we will be able to define the material very easily how it is going to perform in the future that is after 28 days or after 365 days how the material will perform in the structure. So for example if you have high percentage of C3S that is tricalcium silicate and low percentage of uh, tricalcium silicate then the result will be rapid hardening and high early strength with the low. Now we may have a question how we are going to define all these things in the material which we are conventionally used as an alternative material for the cement. Say so there are certain procedures that has to be followed in such a way that we get this box component and ensure that all the required parameters are satisfied with the existing Portland cement, not more or less with respect to the codal provisions, right? So, for example, if you take a strength con contributions, so you can see the graph, the time after the mixing, the strength. So, uh, this is for the one year, providing the moisture is present, the cement can continue to hydrate for uh, many years. However, after about one year, the rate of hydration is slow that is assumed to be fully hydrated and therefore we achieve the full stem. So this is supposed to be the presence with all the compositions which I gave you that is C3A, C2S, C3S and C4A. So uh, the different colors for example if you take C2S, so this is the C2S uh, during the mixing how for the one year proportion how this takes place. So similarly during the process of hydration how the heat is evolved. So this is also a graph which represents. See, when you understand these kind of basics about the materials, then it will be easy for you to project this in your higher level of research. Then it is easy to pr predict or interpret the data which we arrive from the experimental part. For example, this is a simplified uh, uh, illustration of your hydration of the cement process. So uh, as I told you, the four materials which is in the form of a fresh cement is mixed with the water, next it is for 15 minutes. So now you will have a protective layer called as ettringent formed on the aluminate and after 3 hours how the picture changes. So there is a formation of CSH gel hydrate and after 28 days there will be a change in the whole structure. So this possibility of having will be only with respect to the composition that takes places with respect to the cement, right? So, majorly, uh, similarly, when you have a, a calcium sulphate in a very low manner or in a higher level of the content of cell, calcium sulphate in a higher level or lower level, what will happen to your material? See, we you used to have a terminology called a flash set, fall set and the normal set. That happens. So, on addition of your water with the cement, so if there is a too little sulphate in the solution, then automatically it will go for a flash set. So, if there is a possibility of correct proportion, then it is a balanced one where we will not be able to go for. Even if you add some admixtures, additional, for example, if you have a, a proportion of uh, in the place of 0.02 proportion, if you add 0.05, then you can able to find in your mix itself that your aggregate will be separated and the, your cement will be separated. Or not. Same thing here it happens, it goes with your flash head and the fall set if there is a too much of your calcium filter. So, this all about certain basic things which I want to, normally I used to tell even to my PhD students that uh, before taking a course, some basic knowledge has to be undergone with uh, 
the subject that is materials. So once they are very clear with the materials, then automatically for the higher level of research, then it will be easy for them to predict certain data and identify and interpret the data. Right? So coming back to the form of that, as I told you, we call it as a binder, we call it as SCM. Mineral, we said there are a lot of terminologies available for the alternative materials. So as per your ASTM C19, sorry, uh, 593, so it defines that a material which has a siliceous, that is, that is what I mean in the previous slide in the table, silicon dioxide, right, silica content, the presence of silica content itself which has a value towards the addition as an alternative material. So for example, you have any pasolona which reacts with water plus lime will form a CSF hydrate. So similarly, the Portland cement plus pasolona plus water will form a, see, our ultimate objective when you go for an alternative, we are supposed to create a calcium silicate hydrate in the formation during the process of hydration. If you are able to see visually, it, it may not be able to see visually, microscopic level, if you are able to observe certain things, CSS formation, then the material which you have identified is a suitable material in the place of a Portland cement. So that kind of understanding is required. So only we are now changing our mentality to have a high resolution uh, uh, microscopic analysis like a TEM transmission electron microscopy. Like that we have a sophisticated thing. So in India, so the cement production normally in 2010 it is of about 200 million tons of cement is produced. So in 2050, there may be a huge demand. Even now, I was in contact with some cement companies. There is a huge demand for ordinary Portland cement. In later days, after some days, we may not be able to get cement itself. Only blended cements will be available in the market. So people started working with uh, uh, slag cement, fly, like fly ash, they started working with slag cement. So there may be an alternative for even now there is a huge demand for fly ash also. Fly ash is not, certainly we are not getting the fly ash in the market. Even previous, maybe I think before 10 years, they used to send us in a truck for, for the research purpose. But now, even for a small amount of fly ash, we are supposed to pay for the fly ash and get the fly ash for our research. So like that, there may be a demand in a global way of ordinary Portland cement. The future will be only with your blended cement. So blended cement is an alternative is even there is a demand for the fly ash, we have to go for an alternative. There is a slag and some researchers are going on for other things like byproducts. So I will discuss all those things. So as I told you, the composite material contains, so this is a general thing. We are aware that the cement plus water is a cement base. Cement plus water plus fine aggregate is a marker. So cement plus water is a conventional concrete, right? So people used to tell <coughs> different terminologies. The standard thing is conventional concrete. So we have an alternative called the unconventional concrete or something else. So in many standard books, if you refer, terminologies are different. So conventional concrete, so when we, as I told you in this slide, when you change these four proportions, with respect to the admixtures, then the conventional concrete will change into a special concrete. So these special concretes will have a different properties based on the content which we normally adapt. So for example, you have a material which enhances the strength, you have a material which enhances the durability, people will have material which enhances the workability alone. So like that, there may be a possibility of enhancing the property by using different types of mineral admixtures. So as I already pointed out, these are the components and the oxides are present. So why this pasolona is required? So that is the main thing. So the weakest portion in the usual concrete, that is the conventional concrete, is a ITZ. So interface transition zone between the hydrated cement phase and the aggregate phase. See, for example, this is the aggregate particle and this is a transition zone where you have a bulk hydrated cement zone. So when there is a possibility of having some weak portion there, so this zone is improved by significantly by SCMs. So the alternative material which we use will have a uh, possibility of enhancing this ITZ which improves. For this validation only I will show some result how this is improved and I have other few issues that has been 
analyzed in the behavior of the concrete where this pozzolana will into it and enhance the structure performance also so uh, the usefulness of the uh, pozzolana sir uh, <coughs> save money by replacing the cement cast so uh, lower heat of hydration due to low strength again then there is a possibility of sulfate resin so normally people used to come for different consultancy with respect to this sulfate resistance see uh, uh, sulfate will not be in the superstructure only in underground level we find in some places near coimbatore like karamadi metropolitan there is a sulfate content right so in those places what we suggested is they can go for any kind of brand of sulfate resisting cement now in the market you can find some sulfate resisting cement based on the quality of the sulfate resisting cement only for the substructure level they can go for this sulfate resisting where the conventional cement can be used for the superstructure and there is a workability improvement due to the spherical shape of this one so simply we cannot comment on structure of the any pozzolanic material we have to work on the Uh, microscopic level we have to understand the behavior and the performance where there is heterogen formation monosilicate formation so after that we will con uh, come to a conclusion whether it is suitable or improving the workability and converting the calcium hydrate to calcium silicate hydrate that is the main thing so as i already pointed out 60 to 70 percentage of total volume is uh, uh, utilized by the concrete aggregate so even we did some uh, uh, research on ecc engineering synthesis material without any aggregates only with cement and the fine aggregate i have some few slides on that also i'll show you then the water natural water so we may not be able to get natural water in future only the salt water so even uh, we were discussing about this sir uh, was mentioning about the, we may not be able to get a plenty of water uh, uh, which we drink normally so we, now itself we are paying for the water so then obviously uh, if you go for some special concrete it is uh, now it is a mandatory situation where we have to use fiber to improve the tensile strength so there are lot of uh, fibers uh, available even uh, day before yesterday we had a discussion with an organization the new terminology called concrete canvas so in uh, uh, abroad they are start, they started using this concrete canvas where there will be a uh, fiber like our uh, coir mat the fiber will be placed it will be rolled and it will be given to us for placing in the floor and the for wall like that just we have to pour the water and it will hard within 2 hours or 3 hours of time the hard and so like that we started working on that with our textile department so what is the major advantage of using fiber is only improving the tensile strength so different fibers will have different unique properties for example even in your steel fiber we have a hooked fiber cramped fiber so both are not maybe it comes under a steel fiber but both doesn't have a same property this will improve the closely spaced one this will improve the largely spaced one like that we have different things so these are the advantages of using the fibers and the later applications so coming back to the uh, concrete behavior say since i have been given only 1 hour 15 minutes i will not touch upon all the other th these things so only i go for the introduction to embedded metal corrosion so other things you can refer this book you can find a wonderful